Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to deal with TikTok community guidance, in particular if you had certain violation or you have a copyright strikes and your videos were taken down. So the first thing that you want to do guys is you want to click on the lower right corner where you see your profile picture. Then I want you to go ahead and click on the three straight lines on the top right. We're not going to lose our time. Click on settings and privacy. Then I want you to scroll all the way to the bottom of the page and then I want you to stop on the support and about. Click report a problem. Don't lose your time on topics, popular questions. This is simply Q&A suggestions what could be the issue. This is not the issue. Your videos probably were taken down. Probably your account has been restricted, shadow banned, so on and so forth. Let's clear all the issues with the copyrights. Scroll the way to the bottom of the page, click submit, and you're going to submit this particular report or something very similar that appeals to your situation and to your case. Over here, I structure a special message for you that simply states that you're really curious and wonder why your videos were taken down. You want to make sure that explain to them that your content is original and follows the guidance of TikTok. And it's very important for you to point out and highlight that under section 187 of the Copyright Act, you know, everyone is allowed to use a small piece of content, as you can see over here. The Copyright Act provides the stationary framework for determining whether something is fair use and identify certain types of uses such as criticism, comments, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. And also, you want to finish with, please restore my content as soon as possible. That's not all, guys. I want to make sure that you include all these four possible images, uploads, and one video. These images have to be some, something that someone else publishes that is very similar, if not the same. For example, if you have taken a small piece of the news and you make a small comment on it and somebody else took the same piece of news and make a comment but their video is still up running and your video has been taken down well this is your chance to simply either screen record and upload the video over here and pinpoint that you know they're using the same content why your video was taken down for copyrights or violation or their video of the other person or other account is still on if your issue is from another matter, uh, for example, if your uh, content has been taken down for, uh, let's say, somebody fake reports that your content is dangerous, it's against the policy, uh, you have to do the same exact thing. You got to go out there and find people publishing the same content or very similar, if not the same type of content. Take a screenshots, take a, a screen recording, right? Upload all the evidences and this is how you get things resolved, guys. Every time when I had my videos taken down, sometimes three, four videos in a row, one after another, four different videos were taken down for same issue. And every time I submit my message, my report, and every time I won the battle. So this is how we can go about dealing with community guidance and violations, including copyrights on TikTok. Click on your profile on the lower right. Then I want you to click on the top right. Uh, on the three straight lines you want to launch the the settings and privacy menu as well click on it then i want you to click on the second option which is privacy when you're at the privacy you have multiple different customization you can hide likes show likes uh, you can stop people messaging you stop people sharing your story liking it stop people waiting but the most important function that you want to focus in this video is to scroll down and you will see that almost the last option will be profile views when you click on profile views you will be able to turn this on and off and what this actually means see who viewed your profile in the last 30 days and allow others to see what you view theirs so you see when you turn this feature on when you go to someone else's profile and look into their profile, they're going to get notified that you look at their profile if they have this function on. So it's like a 50-50 good feature if you really, you know, don't mind people seeing that you, you know, look into their accounts. But I want you to, to be aware of that, okay? I see a lot of people just sharing the good part, which is, you know, you can see who viewed your profile. But the downside, like I mentioned, is that they will see when you look someone else's profile as well. 
so be very mindful and again second important note over here is that you will only see who viewed your profile in the last 30 days after 30 days uh, you know period expires they're gonna simply restart the process and you're not gonna see who viewed your profile before this 30 days period then you want to click on the lower right corner where it says your profile you click on your profile and then you want to head to the top and click on the three straight lines then you want to head towards settings and privacy the last option now you want to slowly scroll down to the display section over here you want to click on display and here you can manually set the switch between light and dark mode you can also use the device manual settings for example if i go back to the light mode and then simply click on use device settings i will get match of my original theme on my phone i'm using an iphone and as you saw i'm using a dark theme simply because the app tiktok match my device settings this is very important and very useful considering that if you are using a dark theme you probably don't want to use the brighter theme or white theme or light theme on any of the other platforms because switching from dark to bright it's not good for your eyes right it's it might be irritating it might be you know creating a particular uh, like irritation so i presume that this is something that will help you as well it helped me a lot having all the theme all the dark modes all aligned so every time when i'm switching from instagram to facebook to tiktok to uh, linkedin everything is a dark mode so it's much easier for the eye to simply adjust with the light and with the contrast go on your profile and then click on the upper right side where you see the three straight lines we are going to go on settings and privacy and then guys i want you to scroll down to the section content and display here i want you to click on content preferences in this section over here the second option is stem feed when you click on it you have the option to turn this on and turn this off this feed simply allows you to uh, <clears throat> from time to time learn something new that is not the usual hype or the usual training videos it's very good it's very uh, interesting especially if you have to kill a lot of time and there is nothing to do you can pop up and learn something about science technology engineering and math if we go back over here after we turn this on we can simply go and see that the stem it's right over here and we have it back there are more things that are popping up with the recent updates as you can see over here now the shop appears as well on the upper settings menu and you want to make sure that you copy your actual username currently it's copied then you gotta go back on facebook you want to click on the lower right corner where is your profile picture when you click on your profile picture you're gonna be sent to your account when you're on your account you will see that you have the three dots option as a button on the menu you click on that and then you want to click on edit when you click on edit you want to scroll all the way down to the last section which is links you want to click edit your about you section and you want to edit more links the first option is that you are actually able to add social links this is the place where it says username you simply paste the link that you copy or your username that you copy from tiktok after that all you gotta do is to save the changes all on the way up for example there is a save on the top right corner and then you can go back up and this will appear in your bio alongside any other social media account that you linked with remember you have to copy the exact username that you have and you have to save the changes let's find the video that we want to repost for example let's repost this video over here you want to click on the arrow over here and then you see you have three different slides of menus all you want to do is you want to focus on the middle slide over here and you want to click on the first icon the yellow one which says repost when you click repost guess what i just repost the video 
Now you probably wonder what actually happened. Let's go back to our account and see what actually happened. If you refresh your TikTok account, right, you're not going to find the video over here. Your video will be located in the third menu on the middle of the screen. If you can see, you have filtered by your most popular and recent videos, right? Latest and popular. Then you have a stories archive. And the third option will be reposted content. This is where you're going to find this video over here. And this is how you actually repost videos or content on TikTok and where to find the reposted content. Let's say, for example, we want to send a message to, I don't know, Alex Hermosi. Okay, you click on the profile. And when you're at the profile, you have the option if they allow you to send a message, you click message to the person. And there you have it. That's the legitimate account of Alex Hermosi. You can see 795,000 followers. You can send whatever message you like to. And the slim part over here, you want to make sure that your messages are very, very good, informative and straight to the point. Because you only can send up to three messages until he accepts your first message. In other words, if you say hi and then wait for reply, he doesn't reply. Then you say, you know, I hope you're doing well. And then he doesn't reply. And then you have one more message. And it could be, I, I, I'm not sure you saw my previous two messages and you're done. <laughs> so this is why you can probably skip the welcoming park and, you know, the etiquette. And you just jump straight to the point. Hey, Alex, for example, I want to do, 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 do. Another pro tip over here will be to write two very long messages probably and then if he doesn't reply then you still have the option to poke him again uh you know things happen he, you might end up you know messaging him in the in the busiest day of his life right and you simply are out of luck so this is why you always want to keep one additional chance to get to send a quick poke uh, message to 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 let him know you know he can go back and read the two other messages you want to scroll through your feed let's say we want to download this video right you want to click on the arrow over here under the comment section you get three menus popping out you see one two three you want to click on the second one over here and you want to click on the blue icon copy link okay and i want you to head on google chrome and i want you to look for this app over here it's called Snaptic. Snaptic will offer you downloading videos for free without watermark. You want to click on Snaptic. You want to hit this uh, search box, right? And I want you to paste the link that we just copied. Then I want to hit paste. Then you click download. As you can see, the app processed very fast, the actual video. And you have two options over here to download in different qualities. Uh, I just want to give you a quick heads up. Be very careful where you're clicking, okay? Make sure that you click on the right button over here. But this is how you download for free videos from TikTok without watermark. Let's say I'm going to go on GitHub, okay? And I'm going to search up Maze C++. Let's just search that up. And I'm going to write Maze C++. And once you write that, look at this. You can start getting maze generators. Let's say we have this maze generator and this person created it in the C++, right? We're gonna go in this. So it's a recursive backtracker maze generator. And this person has, you know, explained it. So this is the maze generator. You're gonna write that and look at that. It's gonna generate a whole maze that uh, you can work in. You can walk through it. You get the dependency, you get the compiling. It gives you the whole code over here as well with the files. So, you know, you can actually get the whole code by copying it and installing it, you can go to the actual file to get the code for yourself as well. And uh, that was that is what GitHub mainly is for. So upload code, get code, and you know, just talk with other people regarding coding. And that is basically about it. So that's GitHub. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all of you next time. Goodbye. Trello tutorial how to use Trello. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another video. I hope you all are doing great and are having an amazing day. In this video, I'm going to be quickly showing you on how you can use Trello for yourself in the easiest and most simplest ways possible. So to do this, what you're going to do is, first of all, you're going to come to Trello.com, create an account. Now, to use Trello, what you're going to do is you're going to click on Create, and you can actually create a board.
So you're going to click on create a board. And once you click on create a board, you're you know going to enter any board title for yourself and uh, get that board up and running. Now, once you get that board up and running, so let's say I've created this board for myself, right? I'm going to go straight into this board. It's going to look somewhat like this. Okay. Now, how do you add things in this? So to add components, first of all, you're going to click on list and look at that. You can add lists for yourself. So, you know, it's pretty easy to add lists. Then in the lists, you can add cards and just keep on adding more cards. And to edit those cards, you're going to click on them and uh, you can change their descriptions. You can change their activity statuses and uh, you can change every other aspect of it, like members, labels, checklist, dates, attachment, cover, custom fields, dependency, estimation and all these things. You know, pretty straightforward and pretty easy stuff to get your head around. And that is how you're going to use Trello. So thank you for watching and I'll see all of you next time. Goodbye. MailChimp tutorial. Hello everyone. Welcome back to another video. In this video, we're going to be talking about MailChimp and how you can use this absolutely incredible software. Okay. So to start off with MailChimp, what you are going to want to be doing is obviously you're going to, you know, sign up with an account. Now, what is MailChimp used for? MailChimp, in my opinion, is best for any type of email marketing that you want to, you know, do for yourself. It's great for any type of um you know sales crm it's great for lead generation it's good for your sales it's good for getting your company up and running and the best part about this is that it actually has a free platform to sign in with so you can sign up with it pretty easily okay just go into sign up for free now once you go into sign up for free it takes you into the actual sign up gig where you know add your very own business email that you want to to sign up with mailchimp let's say i'm going to add that then you have you know your username and then you can add your very own password as well. Okay. After adding your password, you're going to verify everything. And once you verify everything from there, it's going to take you into the actual, you could say, uh, work ethic and work uh, section of MailChimp. And that's basically how you're going to get started with it. Now, when it comes to using MailChimp, you are going to want to make sure to get a hold of uh, a lot of uh, you could say um, generative assistance you can convert with email automations create faster with generative ai refine with segmentation optimize with analytical things and support you can get started easily with a personalized product tour okay they give you a proper product tour and you can see you can create actual custom journeys with automations you can discover new ways to automate for yourself keep your email relevant and brand growing and the thing is that the campaigning gives you a lot of great templates to work with which is also pretty incredible and you can add as many leads as you want get as many contacts as many customers and as many users you want in this okay and that gives you a really good general idea of how you're going to work with this that's pretty much about it thank you for watching and i'll see all of you in the next video Goodbye. Miro tutorial for beginners. Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to be quickly showing you Miro and how you can use this absolutely incredible software for yourself. Okay. So Miro is basically, as it says, a visual workspace for innovation. So Miro allows you to create these different charts. It allows you to create these different types of boards. Okay. And in those boards, you can use different elements like shapes, sticky notes, and all these other things to create a good workspace and you can also use different boards like kanban boards and all and the best part about this is that you can make a whole funnel a sales flow and like a whole lot of other things to work with so i would definitely urge users out there to use the software because it's absolutely incredible to get a good idea of this and it has a lot of integrations to work with as well so definitely go ahead with this and i'm also going to discuss the pricings now miro also gives you Things like product management, engineering, it's for IT teams, UX and design, consultation and agencies. And there's a lot of great technical diagramming, whiteboarding, wireframing, mind mapping, retrospectives, scale product planning, and process mapping. So there's a lot of great things to take from Miro. And definitely, all of you users out there should use this for yourself. It's the amazing and the most greatest thing to get for yourself. Then you have four plans for this as well. You have free starter business enterprise. Okay, so the free plan is $0. Starter plan is $8. Business plan is $16. And enterprise plan is obviously the basic typical enterprise plan. Okay, and uh, yeah, that's the general idea that you need to get when you're working with uh, something like this. And that is basically your Miro. 
So thank you for watching all the way till the end, and I'll see all of you next time. Goodbye. Slack tutorial. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about Slack and how you can use this absolutely amazing application for yourself to, you know, do your actual workspace editing in, to manage your products, manage your tasks, and keep your team up and running. So this is Slack, basically, okay? So in Slack, you're going to make a workspace. So as you can see, I'm in this workspace right now. Now in this workspace, we have channels, okay? You create channels for yourself and you can create more channels by clicking on create a channel and, uh, you know, add any type of channel you want to. And if you want any assistance, you can do that as well. But as you can see, I have all these channels. So links, team chat, uh, you have work and all these things. So let's say in team chat, I want to, you know, I'm going to write something like, uh, hi guys. And uh, then you can actually, you know, do an at and, uh, you know, message everyone. So it's pretty easy. It's pretty simple. And uh, it's uh, really nice to get a basic idea of how you're going to work with Slack. So just create channels and in those channels, you're going to start working. Now, if you want to invite people to your workspace, what you are going to want to be doing is you're going to go to your workspace over here. Now, whoever has control of the workspace, what you can do is you can start adding people into a certain chat. So you're going to click on add coworkers, enter their name or email, and just send them an invite. And that should be it. So that's basically the idea of Slack. Thank you for watching and I'll see all of you next time. Goodbye. Smartsheet tutorial. Hello everyone. Welcome back to another video. I hope you all are doing great and are having an amazing day. In this video, I'm going to be talking about Smartsheet and how you can use this absolutely incredible software. Okay, so Smartsheet is basically a flexible solution for your work. Now, it's very similar to products like ClickUp, Monday.com, Asana, Trello. Now, the reason for that is that it's great for your work management, okay? It's a great management platform. It's great for task management, great for project management. Even if you want to, you know, manage your personal life, it's good for that because it gives you things like automations, digital assets, resource, team collab, dashboards, portfolio, proofing, account, intelligent workflows, integration, no-code work apps, and a whole lot more. So it gives you a whole repertoire to work with. It gives you the whole, you know, uh, you could say working standard to get your head around. And it helps you a lot in working. So do make sure to get your head wrapped around this pretty well because it's an absolutely amazing software to use. And I would urge all you users out there to get a good grasp of this, to get a good idea of this, because like products like Smartsheet will help you tons. Okay. So that's pretty much the main idea about Smartsheet. Thank you for watching and I'll see all of you next time. Goodbye. Rike tutorial. Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be quickly talking about Rike and how you can use this platform for yourself. It's one platform to streamline all workflows for you, a single app for all departments. You can manage projects, organize work, integrate all your favorite tools and collaborate and drive efficiency for yourself. So Rike is your, you know, team dashboard or team planning statement where you can actually mess around with different components of your work. Okay and uh, you can actually use Rike in a different way. So if you've used, you know, stuff like monday.com or you've used Asana or you've used ClickUp, then Rike will also work greatly for you. And trust me, Rike works great. It has automation, it has Gantt charts, project resource planning, and it has a great visualized dashboard where you can get tasks, processors, and a lot more. So you can see that you can get your analytics in this section as well. And these are all the organizations that use Rike. So there's PNG, Sega, Lyft, Simons, Pfizer, Ogilvy, T-Mobile. So, you know, you have a lot of features and brands using these. Then you can auto organize your intake, custom build for your teams, gain big pictures, visibility, customer success stories. You get Aerotech, Fitbit, Inspiration, all these people use it. And it has great reviews as well. So it's great to start off with it. It's great to use. And you can actually see why Rike. So it has great marketing, professional services, PMO, creative design, also has a great CMS. Uh, you get task management, workflow management, and the best thing, project management, where you can plan agile products. Now, planning projects for yourself is a different way to work as well, because you are going to want to make sure that the management works incredibly and the management works normally when you're actually getting the basic concept and basic idea of this, okay? So 
that's pretty much about it when it comes to Rake. So thank you for watching and I'll see all of you next time. Goodbye.